Okay then my friends, so right now inside the wrapper, we are grabbing the value of the user via this user stream and the provider. So every time a user logs in, then we're getting a user object back from that stream and it's being stored inside this variable. Now, every time a user logs out, we're gonna get some kind of null value back from the stream and this will be set to null. So what we'd like to do is actually check this value inside the wrapper and show the user either the authenticate widget or the home widget on the screen dependent on that value. Now, if the value we get back is null, then it means that a user is not currently logged in, they've logged out. And in that case, we don't want to show them the home screen, we only want to show them the authenticate screen where they have to either register or sign in. So that way we're protecting our home screen. Now, in the other case, if we do get a user back and it's stored inside this user variable, a valid user, it means they're logged in. And in that case, we don't want to show the authenticate screen anymore, we want to show the home screen. So we want to return the home widget instead. So we can do this little check here. Instead of just printing the user, we'll get rid of this and do an if check. And in here, I'm gonna say if user is equal to null, then that means there's no current user logged in, they've signed out. And in that case, we wanna protect the home screen. So we don't want to show that. Instead, we want to show the authenticate screen. So we return authenticate like so. Now. If this fails, if this is false, then we have an else clause. And in this case, if the user is not equal to null, it means we have a valid user. And in that case, we want to show the home widget. So we can say return home. Now we've already imported that up here, so we don't need to import it again. So now let's save that. And when we save it, you'll notice because we're logged in, we signed in before anonymously, and we have a valid user, we're showing the home widget and we see that over here. So now what I'd like to do is flesh out this home page a little bit and add a button to that home page that we can press and when we press it we can then sign out and show them the authenticate screen again. So let's open up our file explorer and go to home and inside here we currently return a container with a child of text. So let's delete that and instead I want to return a scaffold widget so we can add an app bar and a couple of other things. So first of all, I'm gonna specify a background color. Now this background color is gonna be colors, brown and a strength of 50, so a really light brown. The next thing I want is an app bar and this will be an app bar widget in itself. And inside this app bar widget, we need to specify a few different properties. The first one being a title, which will be a text widget. And I'm going to call this Brew Crew. And after the title, I want a background color. And that is going to be colors.brown. And this time, strength of 400, so slightly darker. And after that, I also want an elevation property. And this is going to be 0.0, .0 so we don't have the drop shadow anymore, and it's flat on the screen. Now I also want a property called actions. Now actions expects a widget list and these actions represent some little buttons that are going to appear inside the app bar at the top right. So if I just save this for a second and we can see this app bar at the top, these actions, these widgets that we place in here are going to be appearing in the top right over here inside the app bar. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple of different icons eventually, just one for now, that are gonna appear up here, and when we click those, we can do something. So what I want to do is add the first widget, which is gonna be a flat button with an icon. So flat button dot icon, okay? And inside this widget, we need to specify a few different things. First of all, what is going to be the actual icon? Let me just get rid of that. So we say icon, and that will be an icon widget, and we want to use icons.person. So it looks something like, oops, no, we can't do that, and that's because we need an onpressed property as well, which is gonna be a function, and I'll save that now. We also need a label, so let me just add that in as well. Label is going to be a text widget, and this will say logout, like so. 
Okay, so let me save this now and hopefully you should see it. Okay, so now we see this little button, it says log out and we have this little person icon as well. So that is an action. And we're gonna have another one here as well later on to change your brew preferences, your settings. But for now, that is fine. We have this little action. Now, what I'd like to happen is that when a user clicks this, we then sign out of the application because we're currently signed in and we can do that down here. But in order to do that, we're gonna to have to, first of all, amend our auth service class right here, this class, because all of the authentication is gonna go inside this class. So we need to set up a method for signing out. And we've already done a little comment for it down here at the bottom. So let's just flesh out this function now. So future, because it's an asynchronous task, it's gonna return a future. It takes some time to complete, right? So sign out and this is going to be async and inside we want to try something first of all and then if there's an error we're going to catch that error and do something else. Okay so what we want to try and do is return and then await and auth which is our auth instance up here remember we want to grab that and let me just change this to async correctly and we want to say dot sign out. So this method right here is built into the Firebase auth library and we're just accessing it on this auth instance. This doesn't need to be the same name as this. It's entirely up to you. It just makes logical sense to me to call it sign out. So we're signing out there and we're awaiting that response. Now, if there's an error, what we're going to do then is catch that error and we're going to print e dot to string just so we can see it inside the console. And then after that, return null. Okay, so then now we have this method set up, we can access this method from this home widget. So let's now do that. All I'm gonna do is place async right here, and I'm gonna say await, and then we need auth, and we don't actually have that inside this widget. So we need to actually create this instance of the auth service. So let's do it inside here like so. And this is gonna be a final property. We'll call it auth service underscore auth. And we're gonna set it equal to auth service. So we have an instance of this now. We need to import it. So let me go to the top and say import. And it's going to be inside the services folder and then we want auth.dart. Okay, so now we have access to this instance of auth service. We can now access the sign out method on that. Now we don't need to set this to be something over here because we're not gonna do anything with that value. We just want to wait until this is complete. Now when this is complete, remember, in our stream, we're gonna get back some kind of null value. And when that happens, this is going to update to be null. And because this is now equal to null when we've signed out, it's gonna then return authenticate instead of home. So now we won't see this, we will see the authenticate screen instead. So let me save this and let me refresh over here to make sure we've got all changes. Then I'm going to log out, keep my fingers crossed, and we see now we're sent to the authenticate screen instead. If I sign in, then we should hopefully go to the home page. Yes, we do. So now we have our signing in and signing out procedure kind of done, but at the minute we're still just using anonymous signing over here. What I'd like to do is replace this with some kind of email and password signing. So in the next video, we're gonna to start to flesh out our register and signing forms where we can capture the email and a password.